Hello. I will continue the story of the letters from the previous episode. When the Kalinga people arrived in Southeast Asia, must be accompanied by letters and knowledge in Sanskrit. I once told you that not a local person traveled to study in India. Someone must bring it in. Factors that the Kalinga people traveled to, not after the new wars with Ashoka. Because at that time, the Kalinga people would travel south after the 300-year war. Come and mix with the Tamil people in the Chola region. A dark-skinned hybrid was born. The Kalinga people live in the upper region and have yellow skin. Those in the land below were dark-skinned. Around the Buddhist 6th Centuya, Kalinga merchant traveled to trade with China. Passed through the city of Oka in the south of Vietnam. The merchant married the former local female king. The birth of the land of Cambodia, the legend of Phrathong, was born Lady Naga as we know. Because I am a merchant, therefore, no castles were built in Funan territory. Because the person who created it must be a Brahmin. During that time, the Kalinga people came to central Vietnam. Build the Cham Kingdom to want to settle down. And is the center of trade between India and China. The Cham people rose to power in the 2nd century AD. There are five consecutive capital cities. One Simapura 4th to 8th centuries AD. Two Indrapura 9th to 10th centuries AD. Three Vijaya 10th to 15th centuries AD. For Kauthara, 8th to 17th centuries AD. Five Pandaranga, 8th to 19th centuries AD. Both Brahmin and Buddhism spread together. Indrapura city has built temples and large Buddha statues. I will tell you later. A major event that caused the Kalinga and Chola people to leave their homes. Come again in the next round. It was the war of expansion of the Kalukyas. This event made the Kalinga and Chola people must travel into Southeast Asia. Seeking new land. Traveling to a new land to settle down. Not for trading therefore a Brahmin must be present. Brahmins are experts in Sanskrit. Smart people can talk to each other in Sanskrit. If you go to trade only, there is no need for a Brahmin to travel with you. After the expansion of the Kalukyas, there were Kalinga people and Chola people traveling together. Chola will travel to the Sumatra Islands. Later created the Srivijaya Kingdom. And later built Borobudur. Some still live in the Bali Islands to this day. In the last clip, I talked about traveling into Bago City from Pallava. Later developed into the Pious script. It's the ancient Mon script. There are those who believe that the Kalinga people are the ancestors of the Mon from the Paya script. Became the Mon letter Burma adopted the Mon script. From the Mon script, it developed into the Lana script. And is a Lao script. I mean letters. Not talking about spoken language. As for the Kalinga people, some came through the Gulf of Thailand. In the past it was called the Bay of Siam. Why don't you go to Sumatra? because the Chola group had already traveled before. The Kalinga people therefore had to come up to the central region of Siam. At that time it was not yet called Siam. 11th Buddhist century, cities around the Gulf of Thailand the land is still underwater. Nakhon Padhom is therefore a port city. Movement to Fechabun because it is near Isin and Isin there are treasures under the ground. It is extremely valuable. That thing is salt. Salt is an important resource. There have been wars over salt. Moreover, Isen is a source of a lot of iron ore. Have knowledge in steel smelting Fechabun is a high place. It is the center of the region and can easily communicate with China, Laos, and Vietnam. The Kalinga people therefore had to head towards Fechabun and built Khao Klang Nok, built according to the model of Varka. With a square base, therefore, it is considered to be the location of the city. In Dvaravati Kingdom, without a doubt. Finding a statue of Lord Krishna statue of the Surya God and many other statues. It shows that Khao Klang Nak. It was really the center of the Dvaravati Kingdom. The Kalinga people and the natives married and lived together. Later inscriptions. Therefore, there is a mixture of Sanskrit and the local language, Kam. Kalinga people who live in the central region, the Pallava language and script cannot be used to tell village stories. Because Sanskrit is the language and alphabet used for deities. 
Therefore, the alphabet was gradually developed to be used to write common words in the local language. A new alphabet emerged in the central and northeastern regions of Thailand. It's called Kam alphabets. Kam alphabets are found in the central and northeastern regions. This letter is not found in the northern region. From Sukhothai province and up, and cannot be found in the southern region, it shows that the northeastern region speaks Kam in everyday life. The Kam language was later used in Lawa, because before this Lao spoke Mon language. During the time in Funan, the people in the Funan land did not yet speak the Kam language, because most of them are Cham and laborers from northern Indonesia, speak Malayo Polynesian. During the reign of King Radravaramai, there is no information about what language was spoken, but what is certain is that there is slave labor in this region. He began to speak Kam, which was the language of his slave masters. Since the reign of King Sarevarama, around 1093 AD onwards. The language used is calm, and this language has been used continuously until the present. Counting to the year 2024, a total of 1,474 years, or approximately 1,500 years, slave workers must speak the language of their slave masters, which is calm, spoken for 1,500 years. Until now, I thought it was my own language. I've said up to this point that there will probably be quite a few tours to easily understand that. Kam language was used when the Kam people moved south and used the labor of local people to build a castle near Tunnel Sap. Is present Sambor Prey Cook. In Funan, there has never been a castle built by the Funan people. Slave workers were required to speak the slave master's language, Kam. There was no way the slave master could speak the language of slave labor. Khmers have spoken the language of their slave masters for 1,500 years. Until now, I thought it was my own language. In the southeastern part, the Prakan Chai people have been speaking this language since the Metal Age has been spoken for 5,000 years. Today, I'll tell you just this. We'll tell a new story. Please listen again next time. For today, goodbye.